the power of God, I, I don't know, but there are people God is raising to become mighty vessels. I just saw an anointing rest on you, this role. In the name of Jesus, I don't know where you are, but I pray may that grace now, let it rest upon you and shift you to a new dimension. In the name of Jesus Christ. Welcome to Christocentric Message. On this channel, you are going to get soul-lifting messages, faith-based content, prayer drills, and videos that would help you grow spiritually. Remember to subscribe to the channel, like the video you are about to watch, and comment on it. Stay blessed. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Let's lift our hands to Jesus. Good morning, everybody. Lord, we love you. We thank you. Thank you for the grace. Thank you for vision. Thank you for wisdom. Thank you again for another session. We ask, oh God, that you will visit us mightily this morning. Lord, there are pastors here, ministers of the gospel, leaders in various capacities. We have come to learn. We have come to obtain grace and wisdom speak to us oh god and we declare that as we hear we will obey in the name of jesus touch everyone who needs a touch from you and we decree and declare that our time in your presence will be worthwhile and let jesus be glorified in jesus name i pray please just greet someone at your left and right and then please be seated hallelujah amen thank you again sir thank you bishop thank you for this great opportunity the lord bless you in jesus name i pray my honor again to every man and woman of god um, we have a lot to do this morning and god will grant us grace wherever we stop i trust that um, that will suffice for now praise the lord My teaching this morning attempts to touch a number of areas um, but basically my passion especially because I'm dealing with leaders and pastors is to help us to be efficient in the work that God has committed unto us and there are a few things that we need to know we have to know the Bible says um, arise shine Isaiah 60 and verse 1 for your light is come it is when your light comes that you are able to arise and shine God desires that we be fruitful let's start with Colossians chapter 1 Colossians chapter 1 just two verses Colossians chapter 1 9 and 10 Colossians chapter 1 please read with me we're reading verse 9 and 10 Paul is mentoring the church in Colossae. Here's what he had to say. Want to read, please. For this cause we also, since the day we heard it, do not cease to pray for you and to desire that ye be filled with the knowledge of his will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding. He says that ye might walk worthy of the Lord unto all pleasing. Uh-huh being fruitful in every good work Paul and increasing mentoring the, the knowledge in color to walk worthy of your calling in the Lord to be fruitful in every good work not some every good work being fruitful in every good work it's important we understand that God is passionate about our efficiency and our fruitfulness as believers and then as leaders and even ministers of the gospel all across the globe there are pastors leaders church leaders christian organizations and platforms who seek to um, find greater kingdom expressions they seek to see jesus revealed they seek to see jesus glorified but for many it does not seem to be the case 
and especially with at this end times we are seeing a lot of frustrations growing in christians why they are unable to see the power and the glory of god i hope that god will grant us grace to touch on some of these things in the name of jesus christ according to scripture from the privilege of mentorship and even in my experience i want to share with us a few things that i believe um will have to be in place for a leader a man of god an individual to be efficient in the work of the ministry and then i would wrap up with three areas that i believe satan really wants to attack in the life of ministers in the life of leaders so that you will sustain the intelligence to not give him a foothold in these areas because if these areas come under attack in your life and in your ministry there may not be a future there may not be efficiency are you ready for this morning in one minute just ask the lord to grant you revelation father i'm here to learn i'm here to listen please pray let your hearts be open I desire to be efficient. You are praying as a man of God, a woman of God, as a church leader, as a Christian leader, as a business leader. I desire to be efficient. Teach me how, grant me understanding. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. The first thing I want to deal with is a revelation please look up a revelation of the divine life that we have received i told you yesterday that we're going to touch a bit about it most people do not realize that being a christian has a spiritual implication a man of god a minister of the gospel is not a political appointee a minister of the gospel is not a politician who was voted into power in a democratic system or appointed by some leader the call to ministry the call to leadership is a noble call that has spiritual implications there is a throne that backs anyone who is serving the purposes of god and more so called in the capacity of leadership hallelujah the first expression of the reality of God living in us is the divine life that comes through new birth. Jesus began this discourse with Nicodemus in John chapter 3. When you read from verse 1, 2, 3, then we jump to verse 16. John chapter 3, please help us media. John chapter 3, we'll start from verse 1. There was a man of the Pharisees, the Bible says, named Nicodemus. He was a ruler of the Jews. Then the Bible says he came to Jesus by night and began a discourse. He said, Rabbi, we know that thou art a teacher come from God. For no man can do these miracles that thou doest except God be with him. There are some results that cannot be produced by men outside of the influence and the assistance of God. Next verse. Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily I say unto you, except a man be born again isn't this interesting he's talking to jesus about miracles signs and wonders and jesus is saying let me tell you how this happens it starts the foundation for this possibility is that except a man be born again that means these possibilities are proof that the kingdom has come to you and except a man be born again he cannot see the kingdom when you get to the next verse, he says, except a man be born of the water and spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom. This was Jesus teaching a Pharisee. And when we get to verse 16, Jesus now is teaching. And here's what he said. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son now according to the authority of scripture when we read this scripture today he is not his only begotten son today he is the first begotten of we the brethren but as at the time 
he was the only begotten son and here's the condition that whosoever believes in him that that person will not perish but have everlasting life jesus is teaching that there is such a life that can come to someone who is already alive are we together now remember the person he's saying will receive this life is not dead physically that even though you are breathing in and breathing out there is another life that can come upon you so there is your biological life is that true that authorizes your body and your spirit to coexist in this realm that is biology but there is this spiritual life king james puts it as everlasting life um but when, when you study when you study scripture you study the greek and the hebrew expressions of these words you will find out ugly. that the word is not exactly everlasting now the way the bible was written as you know the old testament was written largely in hebrew and then the new testament was written largely in greek and aramaic there is a you know latin here and there both the old and the new now the way these words work is that the theologians would usually look for a word and look for the best contextual expression that captures that word and that is what is translated into english are we together so many synonyms come to terms with this expression and they picked everlasting sometimes you will see eternal they did their best but the truth is that the life that we have received the life that jesus is talking about is not everlasting life you may have heard me say it everybody has everlasting life everlasting life is not just what jesus gives when you come to him when people die they don't stop living they only stop they relocate themselves from this realm jesus himself was given the parable of the rich man and lazarus is that true both of them died but they were alive again in another dimension so everlasting life is not a privilege of christians everyone created by god has everlasting life the condition for everlasting life is that you pass through the womb of a woman once you are born of a woman the seed of abraham the seed of adam you have everlasting life are we together the word there is not even eternal the word translated there is called zoe by the time john the beloved when you look at the progression of his revelation and growth when we get to the epistle of john he now begins to call it the life of god john had grown the life of god zoe is the greek word is a quality of life great men like papa hagin wrote books in fact there is a book by him called zoe um many of them say it is the god kind of life now i respect their opinion remember revelation is progressive at the time they had this revelation they call it the god kind of life but according to the authority of scripture and they i ever it is not the eternal. god kind of life it is the very life of god are we together now god did not give us his kind of life he gave us his very life the bible says he that is joined to christ we're going there shortly is one spirit he did not give us a type of his holy spirit it's his very spirit the same spirit that was in jesus is the same spirit that is in us there are not many of them and he just gave us a type no no is that true when he said i will send you another comforter is the word the paraclet alos paracletos alos means of the same the exact same one heteros means another kind but of the same tribe so when he says i send you another comforter an extension of me listen carefully now when we come to christ the bible lets us know the condition of the fallen man paul was mentoring the church in rome and he said for all have sinned 
and fallen short of the glory of God. What glory is that? You would have to go back to the book of the beginnings to help you understand the state of man as designed by God. We considered a bit of that yesterday. Are we still together? There are three things that God gave man that made him the zenith of his creation. Adam now. Number one, God gave man dominion. What is dominion? Sovereign power over the entire creation. He mandated man to be head over his creation. That everything he created would be subject to man. Number two, God gave man something that we would learn in the Pauline epistle called righteousness. We're discussing doctrine now. Righteousness. E.W. Kenyon would define righteousness as the ability or the capacity to stand in the Father's presence without a sense of guilt, without a sense of inferiority, and without a sense of condemnation. But I define righteousness as the very nature of God. It is your legitimate authorization to stand before God. Righteousness. Man had that. The third thing that God gave man was his spirit. And God breathed upon that man. He was not just breathing a human spirit to enter him. For man was first created spirit. I hope you know that when God was giving this man dominion mandate, he did not have a body. That was why, that's why the dominion mandate is not for the male. Because the woman was still in the man when he was said, be fruitful. He was speaking to Adam. Are we together now? When we read Genesis 1 verse 2, God now molded dust and transferred that spirit into that dust. And man became that living soul. Man is spirit. But according to the law of territory, it's illegal for a spirit to operate in this realm without a human body. For you to operate in any territory, you must be made of the same material of that territory. Is that true? Is the reason why demons are illegal occupants because they do not have authorized bodies to function. It's also the reason why they look for men or they look for anything created out of. When the Bible says God made man from the dust of the earth, it doesn't mean God used sand to make man. It means he sourced the materials for his body from the elements of the ecosystem. That means your body should be compatible to trees, to water, to wind. It means none of them should hurt you. If they hurt you, a spirit is manipulating them. Because your body was created to be at peace with your ecosystem. Are you listening to me now? Please pay attention. We're, we're discussing the divine life. It's true. You would notice a parallel operation between the human body and even your ecosystem. Let me give you a few. Number one, your body is made of 70% water. The same way the earth is made of 70% water. You see, there is that similarity. Is that true? The same way you can mow your lawn and it grows back. That's the same way the human hair works, isn't it? You can cut it, it grows back, just like grass. The same way your bones, after many years, are still there. It's the same way rocks live for many, many years. You can carbon date rocks and see that they are probably millions of years. There is a parallel. That means the wind should not hurt you. So when there is something called airborne disease, waterborne disease, there is a spirit manipulating them. Water should not hurt you. Listen. The same water that is, that is killing people is in you and yet it does not hurt you. The same air that is hurting people is the one that you breathe to give you life. That is the reason why Satan too uses them to destroy you. Because if the elements don't cooperate with him, even him cannot do anything about it. He will have to use these elements. Listen, when you understand what I'm teaching you, don't tempt me in the name of Jesus. I reject this temptation in Jesus name it's true the supernatural can only find expression in this realm when it is in partnership with the elements of this realm even the Holy Spirit if he's to enter this earth he will have to be in the similitude of a dove or light or fire or come upon a human body 
Are you seeing that now? Yes. And so, man was created to be at peace with this system. Remember three things. Don't forget. Number one, that God gave man dominion, sovereign control, stewardship. And may I say this, that the dominion God gave man is not absolute dominion. There are two levels of dominion. There is absolute dominion and there is shared dominion. The dominion man received is shared dominion. Is that true? Yes. Shared dominion is the kind of dominion that a tenant gets when he pays rent. It is his house. Even though the landlord owns the house, but he has a right to call it my house. And even the landlord will have to respect him from the time he pays the rent. It is the landlord's house, but he cannot come in and just open the door. He will have to respect that man from that day because there was a legitimate ground upon which the man can say, my house, even in front of the landlord, you are welcome to my house. And the landlord does not say you are making a mistake because it is his house. Yet it is the landlord's house. You understand that now? Yes. So when he says the earth has he given to the sons of man, when we say this is our territory, we are not lying, even though the earth is the Lord's. So we have shared dominion and we have absolute dominion. Absolute dominion talks of ownership. Shared dominion talks of stewardship. But both of them refer to authority and control. Are we learning something this morning? So God gave man dominion. He gave man righteousness. He gave man the Holy Spirit. So when man fell, what do you think he lost? If God gave man these three things, these three things God gave man is what separates him from every other creation. If man loses these three things, there is no reason why creation should respect him again. Whoever has this tripartite combination of dominion, the righteousness of God, and the presence of the Spirit of God, qualifies to be the representation of god within that sphere when man fell these were the three things he lost if you don't know what man lost you will not know what redemption was made to restore you see when jesus came this is what he came to restore these three things that man lost man lost dominion he lost righteousness he lost the holy spirit who was the representation of the life of God. So Jesus walks to the earth now and he says, I have come for a reason to bring reconciliation. And for 30 years, he went through all that process and then his passion would begin from the communion. The Bible lets us know that he broke bread. I don't want to go into the whole theological explanation of those sacraments of the communion but jesus when he walked upon the earth please look up look up please look up please look up jesus came not only to die for man and restore these things we lost jesus came according to scripture as a pattern man he came to show us a blueprint of god's expectation how to walk upon this earth and to exercise that dominion in a way that satisfies the father and the father himself spoke from heaven and said this is my beloved son he is my recommendation hear him study him do not be afraid to pay attention to anything he tells you he has received my approval the bible says is that true and Jesus began to walk upon the earth as an expression of God. One of the reasons also that Jesus came to walk upon the earth was to correct our perceptions about God. Because until Jesus came, they could not have that level of intimacy with God. Even when the Bible tells us that Moses and all of these men saw God face to face, don't think they were just seeing God like that. They saw similitude and they had his voice from the midst of them. When the Bible says he saw God face to face, the face of God is not like a human face. No. The face of God is a realm. It's not an object that you look at. If you, if you look at the face of God, you may not return to the earth again because you are entering into a realm. The face of God is not like a human face. You know, when you say the face of a man, you mean the upper part that just covers the skull. That's a wrong definition when you are talking about God. 
the face of God itself is a mystery so when they talk about seeing God face to face it doesn't mean that you just saw the entire face and the form of God the first time people would see an expression of God was when Jesus himself came the Bible calls him the incarnate of God he is the the express image hebrew says of the invisible god hebrews chapter 1 from verse 1 and 3 it says god who in sundry times and diverse manners spake to us in time past had in this last day spoken to us by the his son whom he had appointed to be heir of all things is that true media please let's work together so that when we have these scriptures if the people can just look at it let's look at verse 3 it says who being the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person. The express image of that invisible God. The Bible says the word became flesh. So Jesus was the expression of God now constrained in a material body. I hope you know that his original name was not Jesus. Jesus was the name that they were instructed to give him when he carried a mortal body his original name always was and is the word of god the logos of god the thoughts of god in action he is the rider upon the horse in revelations he is still called the word of god the bible says in the beginning was the word the name jesus was given to him you see if you understand this you will know that the power is not in pronouncing j-e-s-u-s -S. You have been saying it when we say jesus we are letting people know that the one we are talking about is the one who was called jesus on earth it is not jesus that makes demons run away no because there are times you don't mention any name and yet they run away and the bible says if they ever run it was the name that drove them so what did you say are you getting what i'm teaching you now i am not saying to not say jesus you understand what i'm saying when we say jesus we are telling creation that that jesus has been made both lord and christ so the lord and christ we are calling is the jesus you know the same way you say my father is a ceo his name is not ceo no the office gave him an office so that you can relate with him but when a child is talking and he say, my father, he say, who are you talking about? He say, okay, the CEO. Now you understand. Your CEO is my father. He came as a manifestation of the word of God. The God of the Hebrews, the one they could not understand. The mysterious one who moved as fire, smoke and all of these things. Now he was constrained in a human body. And Jesus began to work miracles. Watch this. Signs and wonders. Marvelous things. He began to teach them about a superior kingdom. In a lecture that we have come to capture as the Beatitudes. He was mentoring them, helping them. They would gather in conferences like this and have Jesus teach. And can you imagine the level of the teaching that for three days people could not leave? Until he said, do you know what? Feed them. Do you, you, you see that it was justifiable that the Pharisees were angry. What sort of a man is this who would keep people down? Go home. They say, no way, continue. We have not had it in this manner. If you were the priest, will you be happy? They had not seen it in this way. They had not seen compassion this way. They had not seen the miraculous this way. God was teaching men how to know God. Jesus was not an ordained minister of the gospel. Jesus was not a pastor of a church. Jesus was God who came down to become the lecturer. Because the lecturers were misrepresenting him. And he said, I will come by myself. And now I want to teach you so that you will know me. And God said, listen to him. Please sit down. There are many things that Jesus said that we must pay attention to. And then the Bible lets us know that he began the process of his passion. The passion of Jesus started officially from that communion table. The mystery of the bread and the cup which he said were both himself 
the bread being his body the cup being his blood and then he went to Gethsemane cried there prayed why did he cry because for the first time he would be disunited with the Trinity they had always been one the father the son the Holy Spirit but Jesus would not die if the Trinity is united they would have to be disunited in some way and Jesus will have to allow that for the purpose of redemption is that true now notice everything that happened to Jesus the Pauline epistle teaches us that it was an exchange is that true the Bible lets us know that when Jesus he was stripped naked why because man lost that glory that Shekinah that would cover him Jesus had to be stripped naked in exchange for the restoration of that glory next thing they put a crown of thorns on his head a crown is one of the symbols of a king's authority his crown and his scepter if a king loses his crown and his scepter even if he has a throne he's not a king so the crown of thorns was put on his head to restore our dominion as kings and priests revelation chapter 5 and verse 8 that we have today been made unto our god a kingdom of priests and that we shall reign forever are we still together then the bible says he was beaten according to the way they lashed the jews 40 stripes save one he was he received 39 of those stripes and the bible tells us that by that stripes that means they thought they were just flogging him but they were fulfilling something there was an exchange by that stripe peter said we were healed as his body was lacerated blood was coming out and then he was now hung upon a tree why to fulfill the law that says cost is a man paul was again teaching and i think that's galatians chapter 3 when you read from verse 10 it says christ has redeemed us from the cost of the is written written what is, is written cost is every man not that dies if you die you are a dead man not a cost to be a cost you have to die on a tree so jesus carried that tree is that true please look for i think verse 8 or so something like that from verse 10 to 13 or there about did i get that right go to verse 12 or 13 so that we can have the reference christ has redeemed us he says from the cause of the law being made a cause for us for it is written everybody say it is written yes cost is every man that hangs on a tree if jesus died on the ground they will go and bury him he will be the word that died not for anybody's sins he needed to hang on the cross the bible says that the blessing of abraham you know what the blessing of abraham is the blessing of abraham is not cars and houses the blessing of abraham is justification by faith that is the basis for righteousness the blessing of abraham is justification by faith because abraham believed god and it was credited unto him for righteousness so we like abraham if we hear that it is the blessing of abraham that pattern was named after him is that true that the blessing of abraham might come upon we the gentiles comma that now being righteous we may receive the promise of the spirit through faith the three things we lost now restored in in redemption dominion restored righteousness restored the holy spirit restored when jesus hung upon that cross he died and said it is finished and you know jesus died and he did not go to heaven because when sinners die they don't go to heaven is that true and so they, he went there already in my place and your place and when he went to Hades the place of the dead the Bible tells us Paul was shown this you see why Paul was a powerful apostle he saw by revelation what happened in the place of the dead that when Jesus arrived there the cohorts of hell were forcing him to bow what is it about bowing bowing means acknowledging lordship 
so they were forcing him to bow to satan who had collected the keys of dominion from adam and from that time he became the legal head of the earth god also had to respect it so he came i've paid the price hand me over the keys revelations 1 verse 1 i am he when you read from verse 1 to 6 i am he that was dead and now is alive and i have the keys that's where he got it he went and got it in hell and then he went and preached the gospel to those who were bound waiting in hope for this redemption and they believed him and he now led captivity captive and then he came out physically with his body alongside many of the departed saints they walked around jerusalem and everybody saw them but you see when he came out he went to heaven first because he was not done he was done as a savior, but not yet as a priest. Now he would go to heaven and finish up the priesthood, the Melchizedek order of priesthood. Is that true now? When he went to heaven, he carried his own blood to the tabernacle. There is a real tabernacle in heaven. And when he went there, he poured that blood once and for all. And you've heard me teach it. The mystery of the atonement is a system of pacifism but it was designed such that a one-year-old lamb would die so that it will be renewed because according to that law the length of the atonement is equal to the age of the lamb that died are you seeing that now so if it's a one-year lamb the atonement is for how long so Jesus who is the ageless lamb now died and carried his blood there you see how it is so that for you to know how long the atonement is find out which lamb died that's why they said worthy is the lamb this lamb is not a one year old lamb it's not a 33 year old lamb please sit down it is on this basis that the bible says we have eternal redemption by his blood are we learning now remember where we are dealing we are not talking about redemption we are talking about the life of god if you do not know this you will never have genuine spiritual authority and power as a minister most people bypass this understanding and all they want is impartation is the reason why many people are not strong because it takes the oil and the vessel for profits to happen if the only thing you have is oil and there is no vessel there will still not be profit it is oil plus many vessels and a large spiritual capacity. That's what brings profit. Hallelujah. When he offered his blood, the Bible tells us that the next event in heaven was a coronation service. David saw this. Paul saw this. What did David see? The Lord said to my Lord, sit down at my right hand until i make your enemies your footstool that coronation service this is what he was saying in philippians chapter 2 from verse 5 he says let this mind be in you which was also in christ jesus who although he was equal with god he didn't consider it to be robbery but he gave himself he came down he died is that true even death on the cross wherefore by reason of this god had so highly exalted him and gave him a name here is our name again a name does not just mean a means of identification an office god gave him an office that is above every other office next verse it says verse 10 now that at the name of jesus at the revelation not just the mention the revelation of that name of jesus every knee should bow of things in heaven of things in earth of things under the earth and that every tongue should confess that that jesus has been given an office the name of the office which is really the name is lord that's the office what drives demons is not j-e-s-u-s -S. what drives demons is the power that backs his lordship the earth is the lord's so when we say Jesus is Lord, we are saying this same Jesus. Remember the apostles taught it in the book of Acts. They said today God has made him both Lord and Christ. Jesus. 
He's no longer just the carpenter's son. He's no longer just Mary's son. He's no longer just the firstborn of his brothers. No, he is Lord. Lord means absolute owner. And anytime you are Lord, there are four things you must own. If you do not own it, you are not the Lord. Can I show you? Am I wasting your time? Psalm 24 verse 1. Anybody who tells you he is Lord, ask him, show me your authority over these four dimensions. The Bible says, the earth. This is the first thing you must own to be Lord. You must have control over the earth. Number two, the resources in the earth. The fullness. If you do not have control over the resources, you are not Lord. Number three, the wall, the mind control systems. If you cannot influence the system. And then number four, the inhabitants. If you cannot influence this. Listen, this is the foundational pillar of dominion if you want to take over a territory you must take over the land the resources the mind control system and the inhabitants that's it there's nothing left in that territory again and this is what the devil is after when satan comes he's after land Go and read your Bible. What was the war about land about? That people will, every time Satan shows up, he does not just want men. He wants the land too. The physical land. There is a dimension of faith that is expressed in land. That is why when people give their lands to demons, when they give their lands to strangers, they are destroying the purposes of God over their life. It is true. Kings in ancient times showed the extent of their dominions by the land they will conquer and then establish something that represents them. Please do not forget these four things. I'm not teaching on dominion now. We'll do that hopefully maybe later in the evening when we are talking about the mystery of the ark. I want to show you how we triumph over battles and the vicissitudes of life by understanding the mystery of the ark. You will know why the nation of Israel as heavy as that thing was, they could enjoy it. Let it go with us to battle. We will never go to battle without it. Hallelujah. They would rather forget their swords and their weapons than to forget the ark. But today we remember our checkbooks. We remember everything but the ark. Leave that for evening. Praise the name of the Lord. Look at this. The earth the fullness the system the inhabitants if enugu is to call upon the name of the lord these are the four things that the intercessors must pray about these are the four things that the captains of industry must pursue the earth must say jesus is lord the fullness must say jesus is lord the system must be designed to honor that lord and the inhabitants must call upon the name of the Lord. When this happens, the kingdom has come. Let's get back to our teaching. Is someone learning something this morning? At least we have established the foundation yesterday. So I know that our hearts are right now. We can discuss these truths. When Jesus went to hell and defeated Satan, he resurrected and then... He ascended that coronation when it happened. He now returned back to earth. When he returned back to earth, listen carefully. He went and saw the timid disciples who were hiding and he appeared unto them and said, All hail. Something just happened to me. All authority, exousia, in heaven and on earth has been given unto me. He says, Go therefore. I send you with this same backing. Is that true? now please listen to me what does it mean to be saved what does it mean to be a partaker of god's divine nature because many times we do not understand even as preachers we do a lot of altar calls and those who give their life they just clap and all they think the only thing they can relate to their experience is that i've escaped hell which is true but not sufficient for victory what really happened 
the bible lets us know according to the pauline epistle that at the point of the new birth among the many things that happen number one that there is a translation from the kingdom of darkness there is a switching of kingdoms the kingdom of darkness to the kingdom of his dear son number two there is an exchange of dominion of the laws that are at work in that man's life galatians romans chapter 8 and verse 1 it says there is therefore now no more condemnation to them which are in christ jesus who walk not after the flesh but after the spirit why for the law of sin and death is that true hath set me free or the law of the spirit of life in christ jesus hath set me free from the law of sin and death so there is something called the law of sin and death everybody who is not saved no matter how confident they sound no matter how free they sound according to the authority of scripture that law is at work in them so when people are saved as simple as it sounds as simple as they look they may be laughing while they are saying it it does not negate the truth of scripture there is a translation from the kingdom of darkness to the kingdom of god's dear son number two the administration of righteousness you cannot receive eternal life the life of god so way until you have righteousness equal to that of jesus and the bible already tells us that our righteousness is as filthy rags so by believing that report you receive the blessing of abraham justification by faith now that righteousness is imparted imputed to you and you can receive zoe the life of god can i tell you this the life of god is the holy spirit the holy spirit does not bring the life of god he is the life of god there is no record in scripture where the holy spirit is carrying any other object and bringing it to a man his very presence is the life of god the holy spirit is the representation of the life of god in man you are spiritually dead until he comes the manifestation of god in man now even though when you pray you don't pray to the holy spirit for salvation it is the office of the christ that is responsible for everything that has to do with redemption but the personality that lives in you in honor to that prayer is the holy spirit are we together now yes jesus christ is in your heart today you are right but theologically speaking jesus as a person the man jesus is seated at the right hand of the father it is the holy spirit who represents an extension of his presence in your life physically bodily and even spiritually because the bible says it's not only your spirit even your body is his temple so when you want to host god you don't just host god in a building like this yet it is that building that temple of your body this is very powerful the holy spirit does not just live in our spirit even this physical body can host him Is someone learning something for the purpose of our discussion my goodness there are two principal implications to having the divine life number one when you have the divine life which is the life of God which is the Holy Spirit you must be aware of two things number one you must be aware that you have been made by that divine life one with Christ please everybody say I am one with Christ very simple teaching but it is very powerful the reality of our oneness first Corinthians chapter 6 I believe from verse 7 please let's look at it we're about to pray first Corinthians chapter 6 and verse 7 did I get that right oh dear please help me there's a scripture that I'm looking for we have been made one with Christ. Give me Ephesians chapter 2. 
Let's look at Ephesians chapter 2. No, 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 not, not 1 Corinthians 12. Just go to Ephesians chapter 2. Ephesians chapter 2. The Bible says, and you has he quickened, we'll do a bit of reading, who were dead in trespasses and sins. Uh huh. Wherein in time past you walk according to this world. Listen, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now walketh. Uh huh. That means the sons of disobedience are not just disobedient, they are one with a spirit. There is a spirit that makes this happen to them. Next verse, verse 3. It says, among whom you had your conversation in time past, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, who were by nature the children of wrath, even as others. Next verse, hallelujah. But God, who is rich in mercy for his great love, wherewith he loved us, uh -huh. even when we were dead in sin, had quickened us together. Everybody say together. The key word here is together. Verse, verse 6 now and had raised us up together everybody say together yes. your oneness with christ your oneness with christ we see the same expression in john chapter 15 one of the keys jesus was talking about being divine and he ties it to our oneness with christ is it all right if we read it the first eight verses let's do it very quickly i am the vine ye and my father is the husband man uh-huh Every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he takes away. And every branch that beareth fruit, he purges that it may bring more fruit. Three. Now ye are clean through the words which I have spoken to you. Abide in me and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit of itself except it abide in the vine. No more can ye except ye abide in me. Powerful instruction it says i am the vine and ye are the branches he that abided in me the same bringeth forth much fruit for without me ye can do nothing for without me if a man abided not in me he is cast forth as a branch and is withered and men gather them and cast them into fire and they are burnt uh-huh if ye abide in me and my words abide in you ye shall ask what ye will because I trust what you are asking because you are abiding in me. If you are not abiding in me, I do not trust what you are asking. What then becomes the motivation for your asking? Are we together now? Being one with Christ. Being one, the reality of your oneness. I am inseparable. Man of God, listen to me. You are not just a human body who was once a baby. Something happened to you when you gave your life to Christ. You are one with Christ is a principle of a salt covenant it's a way of binding relationships that do not break easily that means everybody was an ancient practice everybody will bring their salt together and once you pour your salt i pour my salt we mix it together the condition for the relationship to break is everybody must look for their salt and pick it out i'm no longer a slave to feel I am a child of God. oneness with Christ you are not just a Christian you are one with Christ it is true the Bible lets us know that when the Holy Spirit came he did not just come to confirm that you have life now he came to represent the presence of God. Never will you walk alone. Never will you walk alone. That abiding presence is with you. You walk conscious of that presence. When you are laying hands, you know that it's, it's not only your hands that is on someone's head. When you are preaching, it's not only your voice. Their physical ears may be hearing your voice, but their spiritual ears are hearing the voice of the one back in you. Jesus himself showed us that the secret to his excelling when he walked on the earth he said i can of my own do nothing jesus showed us the consciousness of his oneness with christ it has blessed me in life and in ministry can i tell you this sometimes you look at mountains that stand before you in ministry and you're wondering how do i start where do i go but i remember i'm not alone jesus told us that the holy spirit who was with him will be with us and in us 
There are many things Joshua Selman cannot do, but not when the Holy Spirit is there. The abiding presence of God. I learned this from Benny Hinn. The abiding presence of God. Men like E.W., men like um, Toza, they wrote a book on practicing the presence of God and how to cultivate that consciousness. It is already a reality, but it may not find expression in your life until the consciousness is at work in your mind. I am not alone. Someone shout it. Say, I'm not alone. Me and the Holy Spirit cannot fail together. I agree that I can fail. But me and the Holy Spirit cannot fail together. This is not just a Pentecostal talk. I really believe it with all my heart. Me and the Holy Spirit cannot fail together. You carry this mentality to ministry, carry this mentality to church, carry this mentality to business. Me and the Holy Spirit cannot fail together. Man of God, when you know this, you will know that there are no gimmicks to ministry. Ministry will thrive. And if they ask you why, you don't just say because I'm intelligent. I am conscious of this one, this paraclete of God who represents the life of God in me. Otherwise, how in the world do you believe that you're going to stand before someone who tells you I have been bound for 30 years and you believe in one meeting you can look at him and say go free what arrogance without the Holy Spirit by what authority a man has been bound for 30 years and you show up and look at him and say go I stand in pack when you tell you see when I look at you and I say you are free the weed there the me who is telling you you are free it's not Joshua Selman alone Joshua Selman in partnership with the life of God. Hi, my goodness. I'm praying for you that you believe what I'm telling you. When you believe this, you will be a marvelous blessing. Listen, anyone just come, let me use you as an example. Do you know, if you believe you have this life, all this good morning that you are shaking people anyhow and nothing is happening to them, you will shake someone, God bless you. You know, you know what you just said? And yet the person's life did not change. If you enter the house of a herbalist and say, sorry, this was not where I wanted to go. Do you know just for entering, your life would not be the same. Like you were looking for a neighbor's house and you entered into a shrine and said, sorry, sir, I didn't even know this was a shrine. He would tell you bye-bye and pity you because you are coming back. He knows that your life would, just that you entered into a place. And yet, we believe we are carrying the Holy Spirit. And we keep telling people, bless you. Good morning. You lay your hands on their documents. You do everything and nothing changes. And men of God, we embrace people after service. And they say, sir, nothing is changing. Can I tell you this? Help them. The commodity we give people is not oil. What we give people is, I'm not saying those things are wrong. The real thing you give people is a transference of that divine life. That's what you give people. The divine life that you have is transferable. More than just power or anointing or bottle. You are not a man of God just because you are speaking. Even when you are silent, you are still a man of God. 10 years doors have not been opened okay i'm going for a meeting now god bless you he touched you he touched god it is true he did not just touch a body of his pastor he made contact with heaven and you tell him go this gentleman will go and what refused to run away from him sees two people coming not just one person again the yokes they didn't run away because they saw only one person from that family but now because you made contact listen this is why i'm I don't feel bad this is a pastor's meeting 
honestly it should be an embarrassment for people to be in a church for a long time and nothing is happening to them no 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 even though i'm giving an example if this man's life remains the same i will go for a retreat i'm telling you if this man's life actually remains the same it's not pride i'm giving you an understanding it's not the oil that comes on you on ordination day it's the revelation god dwells in a man i was not born like this your parents may still be alive but my goodness is the mystery of godliness this is how to be a blessing you are not a blessing just when you give people money or donation or something that's wonderful but the superior way to be a blessing is get god to people when they are flying you for a program they are not just bringing a man when people honor you they are not just honoring a body they are honoring the presence it's like the ark of god you have come I truly believe what I'm telling you with all my heart. I really believe it. When I understood this, help them. I made a covenant with God that I will never, nobody will meet me twice to be changed. No. no. You can meet me to keep growing, to keep getting blessed. But if you meet me, you, it's impossible for your life to remain the same. many of us have been preachers for a long time we keep preaching and nothing is happening you are sincere but that consciousness has not released the reality of the life of god within you i'm not talking of boastful carrying yourself up that is not where power comes from it comes from a sincere revelation nobody will ever look at you as a cause to them how in what way are you a cause So when someone says pastor come to my shop just come and drink minerals the person is wise he knows what he's doing he's not bringing a man's hand to hold a bottle of um, uh, malt or whatever it is he's saying if there is a way let me be obed edom please act come. come now can i tell you this sincerely preachers we come but we just go as men of god and we go there and nothing happens their lives remain the same look at jesus he walked as the living presence of god you don't have to act superhuman you are superhuman can i tell you this I don't mean please don't feel bad i'm not i'm not insulting you and and i'm not i'm not i know people are following all over the world but only god can tell the number of patients the number of sick people the number of communicable diseases by reason of the kind of ministry god has given me that i've contacted all my life if i were lying about the divine life believe me i would have died by now I have prayed for people that I have been warned be careful be careful I command that spirit to leave that gentleman now in the name of Jesus Christ please pay attention listen to what I'm telling you John G Lake understood this in Spokane he understood it believers in this end time if we don't pay attention our churches will become empty if we cannot bring the reality of God to people people are tired of stories they want to see the reality of the the reality of the life of god i am one with god one with god one with god let me tell you something that happened in my house i was expecting a visitor and the person came with maybe it was for someone to pray for and it was a family and then when they came I sat at the parlor and they had told me they, had, they were coming and I was expecting them to have opened the door and 
for some minutes the door was not open and i hope i was hoping everything was all right and i was hearing it was like someone was hitting the, i said it can't be the dog i went and opened the door and there were the people on the floor just trying to open the door i'm not saying this to brag i'm saying that you see when you carry god you are not the only one who should know if you are the only one who knows that you carry god something is wrong with what you are carrying listen women do you cook anywhere in the house no there is a kitchen but if it's a serious meal you know what i'm talking about anybody in that house should suspect you are cooking something the fragrance from the kitchen no matter where you are it has a way of going to the living room you can suspect what is in the kitchen without going there can i tell you this when moses encountered the face of god the people did not need to climb up again to see god they just needed to look at the man who had seen god to see god reject this natural living this common sense living there is nothing wrong with your mind but there is a superior dimension of living you cannot excel doing end time ministry just acting like a counselor you need more than that you need to act like a genuine solution and it is in your oneness with god how do you know the sick will be healed how do you know lives will change you don't wait until they testify to be sure they were blessed you can know they were blessed this is what jesus taught the disciples and when peter and john looked at the man he said silver and gold i do not have but such as i have there is something we do not see any physical thing being given i have life the life of god is transferable such as i have give i unto you in the name of jesus of nazareth rise up and walk let me pray for someone here whatever has kept you ordinary in your christian life that you are unable to walk in the reality of your divine life i pray let fire from heaven right now bring an activation to that divine life begin to walk in the reality of that dimension in the name of jesus christ begin to walk in the reality of that dimension hallelujah listen i remember one time i was told the story that archbishop benson either holds as someone who i think his face was deformed and he was in a hurry and they brought the person and he lifted the face to heaven he said god this man was made in your image if this is how you look leave him like that your bible that you have kept in your room that we preach with every sunday is full of wonders here ordinary men these are not parables men who walked upon the face of the earth like gods not in pride but in confidence i'm not alone god is with me there is an advantage my oneness with christ listen to me there are people who are who have been respected in this nation because of those they know not because of who they are i saw that photo you mean you and this man yes by the privilege of god's mercy you were with him that photo was not photoshopped yes i was with him all of a sudden their perceptions about you change you ate with this billionaire you were in his house yes i was there and then matters become worse if the person's call comes while they are talking he's still the same person calling me ah that oneness is settled what if while you are talking about jesus he shows up too what if while you are telling the sick he heals he comes to heal them what if while you are telling the oppressed he delivers he comes to deliver them 
what if you are telling the poor that he can lift he comes to lift them help this woman please i question your relationship when the one who loves you does not show up in defense i question your relationship watch this sir when you were honoring the first lady even though she's not here but while they saw the picture everyone was celebrating her probably she may be following listening now and feeling very happy she's not here physically speaking but her relationship with you was preserved and the honor accorded that relationship was still communicated it is not because you cannot see jesus that shame has come to you it is because there is something your pastor taught you something this morning look how we talk about him we sing about him we claim we are one with him we cry and we call him lord come and change lives lord come and bless people and then at the end of it may the grace of our lord jesus christ the love of god amen i'm not talking about falling down no i hope you know that's not what i'm talking about i'm talking about that someone who comes to service insulting god and insulting men of god by the time the fire from the worship comes the man of god has not even come up because those who are worshiping know that they are not musicians they are acts they are priests the opening of their mouth they are not singing special numbers they are communicating life as they hold that mic it does not matter whether the person is leading or backing up it doesn't matter presence is presence that someone who came to church broken one song when the instrumentalists know that they are not just playing instruments they are releasing life through the instrument everything in a church should worship everything in a church should release the presence of god when the ushers please help me with one envelope one if the ushers are passing thank you sir if the ushers are passing this i know it's time for offering but because my hand touched it backing the pastor up while he ministers to you someone can just hold it and know what happened something happened who is this usher you just passed an offering envelope no you pass your secret place with you too listen this is how workers should be trained you are not just workers or staff you are priests you are acts first can i tell you this you return back home and gather your children and say listen you are not just young teenagers in this house let me teach you something you are representations of heaven you carry the presence of god the very shekinah of god the bible says this is the record that god so we know where it came from god had given us the way eternal life the life of god and he said this life is in his son whosoever has the son has that life i have the life i have the life i really do i have the life it's an indestructible life it's a life of grace and power and effulgence of heaven in and through your life not by arrogance and boasting but by a sincere communication of this reality it is true i walk with this consciousness I'm not only anointed when I dress for a service. Anytime you meet me, even when I'm joking, the anointing is there. If there is ever a need in your life, that anointing will meet that need even while we are joking. Can I tell you this? Nobody should come near your life and go back the same again from today. Nobody. Nobody. Some of you with this consciousness, you can run back to your homes and say, Mama, there is a conference ongoing. I know you are coming in the evening but right now let me show you what I've learned bring your hands let's pray and you hold mama's hand and as you are holding the hand the phone is ringing 
and he says i've been trying to reach this family for five years send me an account number and your mother said what has happened i brought the presence of god can i tell you this please look up when you know this you will not let society try to make you relevant by doing things and compromising you have to do a certain thing to be no you have been accepted in the beloved the highest and the noblest position on earth is being one with christ the only other position higher than it is being a monarch or the position after it is being a monarch please help the person our time is up we must respect the time wherever it is we can touch i i apologize but let me please sit down let me just jump this can i just share with you in the next five minutes three dearly beloved i hope you were blessed by this message do not keep the video to yourself share to as many as you can to help them bless check our home page for more of our messages subscribe to the channel comment on it like it see you on our next video bye pray 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 for your destiny the phase of development lord grant me the discipline 